Hello and welcome back to the Grunt Perspective and in this video I'm going to be breaking down my belt kit. <clears throat> so I'll preface this whole video by saying uh, you know I think the cat's out of the bag at this point. I'm an American, I'm a Marine and why do I bring that up? Um, because Americans don't really do this right now and we haven't done belt kit for uh, quite some time, um, basically since well before the, uh, the global war on terror. And um, once we got into the GWAT, we started to move towards plate carriers and, um, well, really it was flak armor back then. Um, and we got away from a lot of this stuff. By the end of the GWAT, no one was using this 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 kind of stuff, or at, at least Americans weren't. Um, so, in putting this together, I really had no experience whatsoever and no uh, baseline. Um, so, I started looking at what a lot of people are doing with belt kit, and really the only sources that I could find initially were guys that are civilians or uh, prepared citizens. And I was, I, I was watching what they were doing with, with belt kit and they were doing a lot of like, they would pack their belt and it would be the only thing that they would take out with them for like two to three days. And it would all be right here. And I saw that, I thought it was a really cool concept, but once I started getting to actually trying to think about it, I realized that like, that is just not gonna work for me. And for there, I stopped a little bit because I, you know, I, I couldn't wrap my head around how I was gonna carry all the ammo, the radios, batteries, you know, all the crazy shit, like the claymores, the frags, the rockets and things like that. and in addition, carry enough food and water for a couple days, all in this. And um, so I had to stop for a minute there, and I had to get in contact with some, some British infantrymen, some Australian infantrymen, some Canadian infantrymen, and a lot of like veteran infantrymen, uh, American and from other countries that used belt kit. And um, so if you're, if, you're, if you're one of those guys that I talked to, uh, Thank you, um, because you guys answered my questions and what the general consensus from what I was told is that uh, your belt kit isn't like a three, four day kit. It's a, you know, 18 to 24 hour kit. And it's used basically in lieu of a chest rig combined with an assault pack. And so everything that's on your belt should be enough for you to do whatever mission that you're doing and basically not die if you were for whatever reason not able to get back to your ruck uh, for at least a day, a day and a half maybe. Um, and once they told me that, that made a lot more sense. And so then I kind of had some guidelines so I could start putting this kit together. Um, so again, if you're one of those people, thank you for helping me out. Um, now, I've been testing this out for a little bit now and some of the advantages and the disadvantages of belt kit that I've already came to notice. Um, one of the disadvantages, right? I guess this could be seen as an advantage or a disadvantage, right? Uh, you can't use a very large pack with belt kit. Uh, or at least you can't use a pack that is meant to have a hip belt with belt kit. Um, now that's not necessarily a problem. The only reason why that's a problem for me is again because I'm an American and those, the British, like the Bergen style packs aren't widely available here. I've got another video that's going to be coming out soon on the pack that I'm using for this, but more or less I found one that works for it. But initially it was pretty hard to find one that was gonna work for this just because of where I am. Um, now that's a positive or a negative though, right? You know, I can't carry a whole lot of stuff, but you know, that, that means my overall load is gonna be lighter. So uh, positive and a negative, it's double-edged sword. One of the biggest positives though is the comfort and the thermoregulation. So we'll talk about comfort first, right? 
this whole kit as it sits right now is 20 pounds and I don't have full magazines or a radio so we can probably count on with all that stuff probably being closer to 30 like 28 27 pounds right um, now the chest rig that I was using which I still use is still a good chest rig that thing was just about 15 pounds and that's with you know full water and, em and empty magazines too so um, I can tell you that that chest rig gets old it does. Uh, now, I would rather wear a 30 pound belt than a 15 pound chest rig. And just the way that this rides on the body is so much nicer. It's a real back saver. Um, the belt, you know, your body is made to carry weight around the belt line, not on your shoulders. Uh, so this works out very well combined with the suspenders here, of course. Another one of the advantages is the thermal regulation. Um, not having my chest and back completely covered in some sort of kit is something that I had never experienced professionally. Like being, uh, being a, a Marine, like ever since I've been in, it's been a plate carrier or a chest rig. Um, and I, I didn't really get the belt kit, why people would be like, oh, it's so cool, it's so comfortable. And I would just kind of be like, hey, you know, like man up, basically, uh, be tougher. Um, but I get it now. Uh, after me uh, getting to run around in this a little bit, do, some, do uh, some PT, do some exercise, and just do some like regular training, in it, what the belt kit does is it, it allows me to not sweat or sweat much less than I would with a plate carrier and a chest rig or just a chest rig on, right? And anyone that's been to like a survival course knows that like, you know, it's not about conserving water, it's about conserving sweat. If I can keep all that, uh, all those fluids inside my body, I'm not gonna need to drink as much as, as much water, but my body was having to sweat so much just to cool myself down when I was wearing those chest rigs and uh, those other types of pieces of gear, right? Now, this that isn't a problem with that, but you know, it's very comfortable. It's very nice to use. Uh, the, last, the last disadvantage that I found is you kind of lose the use of any of your pockets other than cargo pockets. Uh, but I'll show you how I kind of got to work around for that. Um, now, getting into the belt itself, this belt is a completely custom built belt. I was looking around for a while on uh, at the Nixie Works LFR, which is a, seems like it's a really good rig. I've never tested it out, uh, but it just seemed like the butt pack was going to be too tall for anything that I was going to do because I was going to have to carry a pack too as well, right? Uh, so I looked at the Velocity Jungle Kit and I liked that a lot more, but it had some qualities which I didn't necessarily care for. Uh, that being said, I do have their butt pack and I do have the suspenders from the Jungle Kit. Um, so I obviously like those, right? Uh, so I ended up doing a total uh, uh, a put together belt kit from all different brands and all different places and I've even got some custom stuff that's on the belt too and I'll talk about that but the core belt itself is a t3 gear battle belt with a t3 gear uh, just a just a cobra buckle belt um, then I've got tactical tailor pouches here this one's a multi-tool -tool pouch then this one is a strobe or compass pouch t3 gear tourniquet pouches tactical tailor mag mag pouches uh, Tactical Taylor Large Radio Pouch, Tactical Taylor Smoke Grenade Pouch, which I'll talk about, uh, Arctic Technical Gear, uh, GP Pouches, which were custom made for me, I'll talk about that more, uh, the Mayflower Butt Pack, and then the Mayflower Harness, um, and then I've got two more of the Smoke Grenade Pouches on, on uh, the back side here. Um, that's all that's on it. Um, start talking about what I actually keep in it. Uh, so we'll start at the front here. Uh, up at the front, you'll see that my pouches 
are basically just the width of the belt here. And I did that on purpose. Um, I, you know, I wanted the, this to be e e easy for my legs to move in as in like when I'm walking up a steep hill and I'm really like leaning forward on the belt, I don't have stuff that's getting in the way of my legs here. So that's why I've got the small stuff on the front and then, you know, the larger stuff on the back, of course. But on the front here, I've got a multi-tool. This is a Leatherman Wave inside of a Tactical Tailor uh, multi-tool pouch. I've got it on the front. Uh, I kind of played with the placement of this a little bit. Um, initially, I didn't want to put it here. I wanted to put it back on the side of this admin pouch here, but I realized that that was just kind of a hassle to get to. And then with the amount, uh, the frequency that I was getting to my multi-tool, it wasn't working for me. So I had to move it up to the front here. Um, same thing with this. This is a headlamp. Um, and I had this back inside of this ad admin pouch here, but I was getting to this pretty frequently and it was getting annoying. Uh, so the headlamp has its own pouch up in the front of the belt, just a Princeton Tech, uh, just a red lens and white lens inside of a tactical tailor strobe or compass pouch. Uh, both these are one molly column wide and they fit real perfect on, on uh, the front there. Uh, next to it on both sides, I have T3 gear tourniquet pouches. Um, these are fully enclosed tourniquet pouches and I really think that they're perfect for, this, for, the, for the belt kit application. Um, one, because I think that fully enclosed tourniquet pouches are kind of the way to go anyway and two just because of the location um, if it's going to be on the front of your body i really think it should be fully enclosed because you know being in the prone crawling getting mud and stuff stuck inside your tourniquets isn't cool uh, you wouldn't want them to not work when you need them to work you know that would be pretty catastrophic um, so that's why i like the fully enclosed pouches they're both on the front of my body so I can get to them with either hand and you know I can get to them inside this pouch with one hand keep them looped so I can use them with one hand um, and just keep them ready to go there uh, that goes into my IFAC stuff but either way uh, t3 gear tourniquet pouches on the top here I've attached some shock cord to this loop uh, just because these pouches kind of had the tendency to sag down on this specific belt um, but that fixed that. So yeah, I, I really like those there. Uh, now onto the magazines. So, or excuse me, I'll do the gloves first. On my left magazine pouch, I've got a Grimlock that holds my gloves. This is just uh, some of the Mechanics Fast Fits gloves, uh, which I like quite a bit. Um, they're good, cheap, uh, they're durable, and you know, you get good dexterity with them too. Um, but you know, they're not as nice as the pig gloves, of course but you know, they're not as expensive as the pig gloves. So you, you know, you get what you pay for, I, su I suppose. Um, now onto my ammo pouches here. This is going to be kind of different than what I've seen other people do. Like, uh, all of the British guys that I talk to when they send me pictures of their kits, uh, they have all of their magazines on one side, their weak side, which makes sense. Uh, that's, you know, where you're going to do your reloads from, from, you know, your weak side holding your rifle with this side. I chose to not do that because that would have like drastically changed my whole setup. And I really liked how my setup was with the butt pack and the two GP pouches here. Um, and it makes it symmetrical and balanced, which is only going to add into the overall comfort. Um, but I've got three magazines per pouch and then I've got a Velcro pouch here. So a lot of the, the magazine pouches that I have seen, uh, they've, I've seen them to be marketed towards belt kit, have like a, a Velcro lid closure and a buckle closure. And um, they say that like, you know, you can silence the Velcro and just use the buckle to get the mag out. And I don't really understand that argument, to be honest. Um, it's, you know, when I load my rifle, I'm going to put one inside of my rifle. And then the only time that I'm going to open my mag pouches again is if I'm in a firefight or, you know, I'm in an attack or something like that. So like the element of surprise is already gone. I've already deliberately exposed myself or been compromised. So, 
you know, I'm, ar I'm already shooting at this point. So there's no point in silencing that. Like, you know, I'm not going to open the pouch if I don't need to open the pouch. So I like Velcro for magazine pouches because it allows me to pull it open easily and then pull a mag out. And then with this actually on my body, the lid's going to fall closed. And I know that I'm not going to lose, an lose, an lose another magazine. On the subject of magazines, um, I have aluminums inside the belt right now. It can run PMAGs. Uh, these pouches fit, fit PMAGs and close with PMAGs. I like the aluminums uh, just because, you know, they have the slick sides. They're a little bit easier to pull out and re-index and whatnot. But, you know, you, you can do PMAGs if you have to use PMAGs. Uh, how I use these and how I've been taught to use these, um, these uh, multiple magazine pouches is, you know, you pull one out here. And then say you have one in, in, inside your gun, you try to put it back inside your pouch. I see a lot of people that try to fumble fuck and like stuff it back in the front. Don't do that. Go from the back, put it in the back. And that performs two functions, right? One, it puts my magazine back in the pouch and two, it keeps a fresh magazine up in the front of the pouch. These two are both fresh magazines, you know, so I put one in, I pull one out and then you know, I fire some rounds from this one, put it back in. Now these two are, you know, half spent and this one's full, right? So that's how I've always been taught to use them. That's how I do use them. Um, it works out well. And then, you know, it's not the end of the world to take your hand off of your pistol grip on your rifle and pull a magazine out with this hand, you know. I don't know. That's, I think it's a flat range thing. Uh, it's not really going to matter when I'm, you know, doing buddy rushing or patrolling, you know, I'm not doing speed reloads. Um, I mean, I'm, 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 I might be, but you know, the idea is to not speed reload either way. Um, so those are my magazine pouches with the magazine pouches. I just ordered some new ones from, a from a project redacted. Um, they're very similar to these. How, how, however, he says that you can fit four, uh, four mags inside of them. Um, so my mag count right now is six. I would like it to be eight. Uh, but I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely do an update when I get those in, um, on the subject of magazine counts. That's another thing that I see with uh, belt kit right now is people having like 12 or 16 or 18 magazines. And, uh, that's, that's, that, that's just a bit much, right? Like eight magazines, I think is a good number. Six is definitely a good number as well. But you know, the more the merrier, I suppose, but it's to a degree, right? If you've got so much ammo on your belt, like, you know, that's gonna get annoying. Um, so I think that like six to eight is a good number to have on you. And then if you know that you're gonna need more than that, there's nothing stopping you from just slinging a bandolier around your body um, and having some more useful stuff on your belt instead of like 400 rounds of 556. Five, uh, you know, that's just me though. A lot of people are gonna, I feel like they're going to disagree with that, but like ammo maxing is cool and all, uh, but it's heavy. Ammo's heavy. Every full magazine is about a pound, right? So if you're rolling with 20 mags, that's 20 pounds of ammo. Um, this whole belt is 20 pounds, right? It'll be like 30 with, with the magazines and the radios and whatnot. But either way, you get, you get what I'm saying. Um, just, it gets excessive. Um, now, onto my, or here, we'll uh, take, take these out, lay them out on the table so we can get that cool blown out gear pick at the end. Everyone's fetish is blown out gear picks. Um, there we go. Uh, now onto the left side of the belt here. Uh, I've got my Tactical Taylor large radio pouch. Uh, it'll fit a 152, a 163, an Embitter, a 148, and any of those large uh, military radios. And then you can fit some smaller ones inside there too. Just gotta make sure you tighten up the Velcro on there so you don't lose it. Uh, it it's good right there. It's just on the front of this GP pouch. And then I have a push to talk that normally goes inside of my ruck that just attaches to the front of the sternum cinch on the belt kit right there. Um, and then, you know, the, the push to talk obviously 
attaches to my headset and then you know got the radio attached to my brain so I can uh, so I can think or the absence of thought rather um, but yeah this uh, radio pouch works out well then on this side uh, in, in between my magazine pouch and my GP pouch I've got a SE4 uh, I, I'm sure you guys are gonna light me up for having like my handle like hidden like that uh, but I found that my field knife isn't something that I really need to get to that quickly or frequently for that matter but at the same time it's something that you don't want to leave home without in case you do need it so it has to be on the belt somewhere and preferably it needs to be somewhere where I can get it I don't want to just put it inside my butt pack right um, so I put it right there it's attached directly to the inner belt you can see and uh, so far it's been working out fine I can get it out pretty easily. I can get it back in easily. I just have to be careful not to cut this pouch. Um, but yeah, just like I said, it's something that I haven't found the need to get to very quickly or very frequently. So I'm comfortable with it being a little bit harder to get to. Uh, probably not the best answer there, but it is what it is. You got to make it work. Um, now onto the front of this GP pouch here. This is uh, a Tactical Tailor smoke grenade pouch. And I really like these smoke grenade pouches because they're obviously they're large enough to fit a smoke grenade, but they're small enough to where you can put a frag inside them and it doesn't completely like swallow it up. So I've got a dummy frag in, in, inside here right now and you, you kind of just have to get on the bottom here and squeeze a little bit so you can grab the fuse, pull it out. You can see it's a dummy, don't call the cops, right? Um, but yeah, so... I've got one grenade pouch that I can either put a frag or a smoke in up on the front where I can get to it really easily. And then I've got two on the back of these pouches, which are still easy to get to, but that one is obviously the easy, excuse me, the uh, e easiest to get to. <clears throat> uh, now, going on to the side pouches here. So I wanna talk about the side pouches for a minute because they're really awesome, really great great design. Uh, these side pouches are modeled on the footprint of the 200 round saw pouches. Um, you know, like the Eagle Industries ones or the LBTs that have the split top flaps and the dividers so you can shut one or the, or the, or the other side. Um, I was initially, I, I was using two of those pouches on here and I kept running into the problem uh, where the buckles aren't attached to either side. Like there's, you know, a strap on the bottom and then the buckle that's up here, it's loose. So I would have to try and get both ends of the buckle inside my hand and fuck with it until I could get that thing um, to click together. And all of that is just to know, just, you know, to take a drink of water. Um, so it's like, a oh, fuck it, I'm just not gonna drink water. Uh, that shit's annoying, I'm not gonna deal with it. So I was scrolling through Instagram, I, I, I came across the Arctic Technical Gear. Uh, he's a custom gear company, dude is awesome. Um, I hit him up, told him what I wanted. He was with me every step of the design process, made sure I got exactly what I wanted, even down to like sending me pictures of like the CAD scans that he has drawn up and like, I was able to change things like, no, like, I don't really want that. Like, can you do, do this instead? And he was super awesome dude. But what he did is he put together a pouch for me. That's that, that, that's that size, but the buckles are going to be retained on the bottom here so I can do it with one hand. I just find it, put it in there, right? Pull my canteen out, take a drink, put it in and then I can put it straight in and then, you know, if I want to do it quietly, you can always do the, the quiet buckle method there. Um, so super awesome pouches made by this guy. Again, Arctic technical gear. If you need stuff made and you know, no one makes it, hit them up. He will, he'll make sure you get what you want. And it's fast timeline too. It only took like a, a couple weeks or so. Um, so yeah, I would really, Highly recommend him. Uh, but I've got two identical ones, one on each side, uh, and I'll talk about what goes inside of each of them now. Um, 
So on the front, on both sides, I have the uh, two of the Platitech, the uh, canteens, the square Nalgene, well, not Nalgene's, the square canteens, uh, one liter of water. And then on them, I have taped uh, two sets of catadin tablets to each of them. So I have the ability to purify a little bit of water if I need to, uh, and it's just taped right onto the bottle. So I never forget it. I'm never without it. Uh, these pouches are, can also fit Nalgene's. That's what I was, that's what I was using um, just before I got these square bottles. Uh, but yeah, they fit Nalgene's or the square bottles, obviously. Uh, and yeah, they work really well. Um, the harness is attached to uh, the side of the pouch that the water bottle is in. I did that on purpose because I wanted, I wanted the water bottles to be as far forward on the belt as possible. One, so I could get, get it to them quickly and two, so I don't have that like sag with the water bottles in, in the back here that I, I noticed with some of my earlier setups on this. So I wanted them to be pretty much on, on the sides of my body and so I could directly mount my harness to them and it works out well. Uh, the belt is very balanced. Um, so yeah, I like that quite a bit. Uh, now onto my, sh onto the strong side here. You, you can see I got some red tape around this. So this is my IFAC pouch. Um, what I'm using for an IFAC is two of the SOAR Rescue Med Mags. If you're unfamiliar, uh, this is the profile. It's made so you can put it inside of a double mag pouch, uh, but it's got chest seals, it's got a pressure dressing, it's got a N, uh, NPA, uh, it's got a bandage, com compressed gauze, some gloves, and um, I've got two of them. So that's probably more than one person is gonna need. No big deal though. It doesn't hurt to carry extra IFAC stuff, right? And then I've got a needle D and, and, and a Sharpie down in the bottom there. And of course I have the two tourniquets that are on the front of the belt. Um, so yeah, Soar Rescue Med Mags. These are like 30 bucks a piece. Definitely worth, worth, worth the money and, and they fit exactly how I need them to inside this pouch. Um, but yeah. Uh, now coming over to this side, uh, I've got like my knickknacks and trinkets and bullshit pouch basically. And the way I, I guess my philosophy on the stuff that goes in here is it's stuff that I uh, want to be able to access without taking my belt off. Um, you know, I've got all the space in the butt pack to put this stuff, but I want this stuff to be here so I can get to it, you know, without having to completely undress myself. Uh, so first thing I've got three triple or four triple A batteries for my Garmin, which I don't use very much, but uh, nevertheless, if you've seen some of my other videos, you, you know the problems with Garmin's and uh, it's basically just a stand in for the GPS that, you know, sometimes you do or don't get issued. Um, inside here in a Ranger band, I have uh, a couple things. I've got a whistle, which can be useful for signals, a uh, mirror for, you know, for signaling or just for looking at myself. Um, some camouflage paint. And then right here, I have one of the Ranger cards from Black Hills Designs. If you're unfamiliar, you basically put this end inside your mouth and you look at what you're looking at through this card here. And it gives you a rough range in increments of one of 100 meters. And it's got some scales here, like a standing man, uh, a IMF container, or like a SUV. Um, I haven't got to use it yet, but I think it's going to be pretty, pretty cool. I've tested it out a little bit. I found the ranging to be pretty accurate. Um, not necessarily a hundred percent, but you know, it is nice for quick ranging, quick estimation. Um, so that's just all there with a the ranger band. And next thing I've got inside here is a, is a buzzsaw just an IR chem light on a string so I can pull it out and spin it around. Uh, nighttime signaling and then some daytime signaling with uh, air panel here um, could be useful, you know, for when you're on a patrol or in the attack or something like that, you don't wanna have to take, you know, your belt off to get to the signal plan and whatnot. So um, that's why I keep that there. 
right here I've got some extra batteries, uh, four double A's, four one, two, three batteries. And this is pretty much the same philosophy as the water. This is the last batteries that I'm gonna use. Uh, I've got more batteries inside my ruck. I've got more water inside, inside my ruck, but these batteries are emergency batteries in case, you know, uh, again, I'm away from my pack for longer th than I expected to be. So right there, and then here I've got a Garmin. Again, I've already talked about the Garmin and the problems that come with Garmin's, but that's why it's in the bottom of the pouch. Um, now, on to the back side. On the back side of both of these pouches, I have one of the Tactical Taylor smoke grenades, uh, one on each side for a total of three grenade pouches. So I could carry, you know, two frags, one smoke, uh, you know, two smokes, one frag, or just all smokes or all frags. But no matter what, I don't have to worry about it because I've just got pouches that can do both. Um, which is, you know, I, I think there's definitely value in that. Uh, so definitely would recommend that to anyone that's looking for a grenade pouch that can do a little bit more. Um, now, getting into the butt pack here. A lot of people are not fans of the butt pack. I've noticed from the people that have the jungle kit, uh, a lot of people do not like the butt pack. And I, I get it. It's large. It can be floppy, uh, but I like the butt pack because it is large and I can fit uh, just the right amount of stuff inside here without overfilling it. And it rides well, you know, I don't have room on the back of the belt to do two G, uh, GP pouches. I would need six columns of molly and I've only got uh, four back here. And for me to move these pouches forward, it would then cause my magazine pouches to move forward and then now my magazine pouches are up in the front of my legs here and that's just gonna be really uncomfortable. So I'm not, I don't, I don't see myself ever getting away from the butt pack if, if nothing else but for that reason. Um, but I do like the butt pack. Don't, 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 don't think that I don't like the butt pack. I like the butt pack. It's fucking based. All right, uh, so in the butt pack, it's got this Alice pack style lid um, inside here, I keep uh, an emergency blanket, can be used you know, for yourself, for a casualty, uh, or it's orange, so you could use it for a big signal panel or something if things have really gone to shit and you're trying to get rescued by anyone. Um, and then I've got some hygiene supplies here, just some baby wipes. It's basically just you know emergency poop supplies, because uh, when you gotta go, you gotta go, right? And I'm not trying to tear the top half off of my sock. Um, ask me how, how I know. Uh, anyway, um, keep those there. And I, I basically just put them in there and I forget about them until I need them. Uh, the butt pack's got like the snow skirt thing. Kind of annoying. I kind of wish that it had a cinch in the top here. Uh, but whatever, it's not that big of a deal. Um, on the top here, I have my small field craft kit and inside here I've got a couple things. I've got about four or five arm lengths of 550 cord here. Uh, could be useful for any number of things. You know, it's another one of those things that, you know, the infantryman just doesn't leave home, home without. Um, some tape, a lighter. Uh, you can use tape for a thousand things. You can use lighters to, you know, warm yourself up start a fire. Uh, in case the lighter fucking sucks, uh, I've got a fire steel and a, and a striker made, made by Zippo. It's a nice one. Um, I've got some fire tinder and some zip ties. All of this is stuff that I've either wanted to use or have used on patrols in the past. So uh, there, there is a method to the madness. Uh, some Ziploc bags here, some extra gallon Ziploc bags. I've, I've used those to collect stuff, um, you know, wild edibles or just like some TSE stuff or something like that. Um, small sewing kit with uh, some additional stuff. Some of the black safety pins from the bandoliers are good for quick fixes. I've got some, some, uh, some fishing line inside there, which can be useful to like sew gear and whatnot instead of just uh, uniforms. Uh, so good thing to have and then all of it inside of a Ziploc bag. 
just to keep it contained really. Um, next thing I've got inside here is an emergency rifle maintenance kit, which is a concept that I wasn't familiar with, but uh, I picked up from one of the British guys that I talked to and I think it's pretty cool. I've applied it to all of my gear. Uh, it's basically not a full, full rifle maintenance kit. It's just what you need in a pinch. Um, so I've got, a, I've got a ruptured cartridge extractor here. I've got my cleaning rod so I could push out a, a stuck cartridge. I've got a brush and a bottle of lube and the whole thing is contained inside a rag here. And you know, I've got the rest of my cleaning kit inside of my ruck, but this little part stays inside my gear and if I ever need it, then I got it basically. Um, so yeah, those right there. Now I've got one field stripped MRE. Uh, this one is elbow Mac in a tomato sauce. That's a, that's a real winner right there. That's a good one. Um, but you know, it's the same concept as the batteries and the water. I don't eat this unless I absolutely need to, but I carry it with me all the time um, just in case I need it basically. Uh, now, last thing that's in here is a, I believe a 12 or 13 liter Osprey dry bag that I use to keep a couple things in. Um, Uh, first thing on top, I've got a beanie. Everyone knows you got to have your beanie. Um, now I've got a pair of wool socks. Again, never going to catch me without a change of socks. Um, long sleeve shirt. This is perfectly adequate for this for this time of year. Um, as it gets a little bit colder though, next year I might have the need to upgrade this to like a to like a waffle topper or something like that. But a, but but a long sleeve shirt is perfect for right now. Um, and then uh, I've got a, my NVG insert uh, with my SL3, my elbow, and my Rhino mount. And uh, this is a tactical assault gear insert. Uh, I like these ones more than the Eagle ones because they have like a hard plastic part inside here instead of just the padding. So it keeps it a little bit stiff, which I thought was going to be right at home on the belt kit because you know, the probability of it getting bumped into stuff or getting smashed against a tree or sat on or some shit. Uh, anyway, then on the bottom here, I've got my tarp. Uh, this is a GI poncho. Um, and it's got the head hole. I've sprayed it with some waterproof stuff to make it a little bit better than normal. Um, and the last thing that I'll talk about is my admin gear. Uh, using the belt kit kind of presented a new challenge for me because uh, I was used to keeping a lot of my, or at least my right in the rain book inside of my back pocket. Now with using the belt, the belt kit, like you can't really use those pockets. So I kind of changed this up a little bit. I've already made a video on this, but it's just a, a little bit different. So I thought I would include it. I've got a notebook here, a calculator, a couple protractors, brief cards, uh, a little sketch paper. It's been laminated and my map pens and, and stuff like that. And all of this just goes inside of my cargo pocket. I bring it up because I've noticed that most people that run belt kit, um, they have like a dedicated pouch for all their admin stuff or like the British guys will have like their TAMs inside there. And uh, I don't think I'll ever get to doing that. Um, I've always been a big proponent of keeping all of your admin gear on your body for, you know, one, it's always with you and two, the physical security reasons of it as well. Um, so I don't think I'll ever do that, but that, but that is, you know, the most common way that a lot of people are doing it. Um, and that, and that's it. Just like I said, the belt kit is 20 pounds unloaded. So probably closer to 30 pounds loaded with, uh, with, with a radio. And I really, I, 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 I really dig it. Um, it's basically everything that I need to fight with everything that I would have put inside a assault pack to go on patrol if I was wearing a chest rig, right? And uh, not having to carry an extra backpack or have that, you know, having to pack that pack while you're in a patrol base 
is nice just to be able to drop your big pack off and you're ready to go straight on patrol. In addition, like, you know, if we were to get into some sort of, some sort of contact and I had to just ditch my ruck there, like I've at least got this stuff with me. Right. And this is enough to get me through the night, at least depending on the weather. And then, you know, of course this is going to get adjusted based off the weather. Um, so it's definitely a cool concept. And I definitely think that the American military uh, it, it is going to get back to this kind of stuff soon. I hope so. I would like to see that. You know, it works well with armor. You can wear a slick plate carrier over um, the, the, uh, the, uh, the harness here. And, you know, there you go. There's your armor. You can, you know, obviously you can wear your Kevlar and whatnot. But... There's definitely something to be said about building that like strict like uh, muscle memory to only having one kit ever, right? Uh, having a chest rig and a plate carrier and like a battle belt and stuff like that. You know, you get a lot of stuff that you have to train with when opposed to just training with this kit. I really think that this is like the premier infantryman's kit and uh, I really would like to see it being more commonly used. Um, but you know, I'm only one man and I, I can, I can only spread the word so much. So hopefully this video makes it to a lot of people and other people start doing this kind of stuff. Uh, just like I said in the beginning of the video, if you're one of the people that helped me with this, thank you very much. Uh, I'm still super not familiar with this, so I'm sure that there's going to be comments, questions. You can either put it in the comment section or you can hit me up on Instagram at the grunt, at the grunt perspective. And uh, other than that, thanks for watching.